Greetings everyone. In today's video, we're going to make spoons using coals from the fire. So as you can see, I'm sitting here by my fire pit. And what you need to do this is spoon blanks. That's what you call uncarved spoons. And I make this from, um, this was specifically apple wood. Um, you just take a tree branch, um, maybe this thick, and cut it, maybe six inches long or, or shorter, um, depending on the size of the spoon you want. And then I took an axe and I cut it in half after sawing it into the pieces. And then that way I have a flat side like that. And this is what I'll use to make my spoon. So I also need an old metal spoon. You can use sticks as well. This is for scooping coals from the fire. Sandpaper. I use multiple grits. I have a rough grit, 100, uh, 150, and a fine grit, 320. And this, these are to um, sand the spoons after carving them. And I also have a carving knife. I also have a jar of oil. This is coconut oil, but you can use any type of oil. And this is to um, seal the wood after you sand your spoon. And finally, personally, I use cut-resistant gloves because I'm bad about cutting my hands, and this makes sure that I don't do that. So let's get started. So my fire is lit. And first, it'll just burn in small pieces, and then I'll add some big logs. And it'll take a little while, maybe 10-20 minutes, to have some nice coals that I can use to burn the spoon. I've added a few logs, and as you can see, the fire's grown. And once the logs start burning down and forming coals, then I'll be ready to start burning my spoon bowls. If it helps, you can take a sharpie or a pen and trace the outline of the spoon that you want in the bowl, and that can be a guideline as you're burning and when you begin carving. A word of caution before we start burning our spoon bowls is there's a high likelihood that you could be burnt or you could burn your clothes during this process. So just watch out. One thing you can do to start to stoke your fire is to make a diamond with your fingers like this, just a tiny peephole, and use that to expand the scope of your exhalation. That adds oxygen to the heart of the fire which makes the fire grow and your fire and the wood will burn down more quickly producing your coals. So there's some beautiful coals in there now and I'm going to use an extra stick. I always have an extra stick handy to manipulate the fire and I'll use this to pull out a couple coals so that I can grab them with my spoon. Take my spoon. It's a little hot. I use my spoon to grab a uh, red hot coal and then I turn it over and just blow. Keep adding oxygen to it. And I just hold down the coal like that on top of the spoon blank and keep blowing to keeping to keep it hot. And as I blow, I can adjust where the coal is to make sure I'm burning where I want. And if your coal shrinks or it goes cold, what you can do is just throw it back into the fire and get a new one. And keep adjusting as you burn. It's really easy to botch this part. As you can see, I'm burning away the side. And you could burn too deep and just burn away your spoon, so just keep watch. Some people prefer using the chopstick method as opposed to the spoon because they think it, uh, they say it gives them better control over the coal. So you can use, take two small sticks like this. It also gives you good reach. Into the fire to get your coal. 
and you can hold it and adjust it really well with the chopsticks. So hold it where you want, hold it down with the sticks and keep blowing. And when there's the fire, it's a little cooler. So that's why you want to keep blowing. Your chopsticks will burn away too. So now my spoon bowl pretty much to the size that I want. It's nice, not too deep. And um, I have space that I can cover on it at the top and on the side to make the shape that I want. And whenever I make spoons, I normally burn a few before I get into carving. So let's burn some more. So now I've got a couple spoons burnt to the size that I want. And I added some more wood to my fire just to keep it going and we're ready to carve. So I got my gloves to protect my fingers, got my knife, and I got my burnt spoon ready to go. So a few tips about carving, you should always carve away from yourself, at least that's what they told me in the Boy Scouts, but I do, I do both ways. So if you're making hard strokes, make sure to carve away from yourself. I'll take away all the bark. You may be able to leave the bark too, if you like the, the color. I carve towards myself only very softly when I'm making fine detailed strokes. So if I just need to get really fine details, I like to put the spoon up to my sternum right there. Just It gives me extra control and I'll just carve very softly. That way I'm not accidentally injuring myself. And that gives me the control that I need to make really detailed cuts. So as I'm, as I'm carving, I'll carve away the handle first, really focus on the handle, just slimming it down so that I know the parameters of my spoon. And once I have the spoon handle that I like, I can focus on the top. And I'm always really careful carving around the top because it's also really easy to mess up the spoon then too. So I'll just carve around and get the head the shape that I want. My art teacher taught me in a different context that you can always take off more but you can't add any back on. So I choose my cuts carefully and wisely especially when I'm getting near to the finish because you can always shape it more but you can never add back on a piece that you accidentally cut off. You also want to stay seated while you're carving not moving around making sure that nobody's in your direct circle just to maintain safety make sure that you don't hurt yourself or anybody else. So finished carving my spoon and I have my sandpaper here this is the rough grit the 150 and this, I will use this just to take off um, the big marks. Going all around the, the handle as well as around the head of the spoon. Spoon is looking nice and smooth. I worked out a lot of the notches with um, the 150 grit sandpaper, and next I'm going to use the 320 grit just to take out all the ridges made from the rough sandpaper, and it also brings out the color too. Now that I've used both grades of uh, sandpaper, I'm going to take my oil, and I don't need much, maybe that much, and it'll melt as I rub it from the heat of my fingers and I use the oil, I rub the whole spoon with the oil um, including in the spoon bowl and this does a couple things so first of all it's going to waterproof um, your spoon 
and prevent any bacteria from growing, especially as coconut oil is antibacterial. Um, so it prevents the bacteria and mold from growing in your, in your spoon, inc um, increases how long your spoon is going to last. And also it brings out the color, as you can see. There's some of the, some of the um, ash in there too, so it's going to give it a little darker color. Um, so yeah, it, it draws out the natural color in the spoon, and it can make some details really pop. So here's my finished spoon. It's looking great, and as you can see, I used the natural contour of the wood to make a, the ergonomic grip. And this is another spoon that I made earlier in the week, and probably my best one yet, so another example for you. I hope you enjoyed this video, and stay tuned, subscribe so that you can see more.